Now I've got a deep interest in the topic of conflict. Like why is it that groups just constantly disagree and cannot come to terms or come to a solution amongst each other? And there are many explanations, but the focus that I like to take is one that's psychological. Studying the psychology behind disagreement and some of the factors that influence this conflict between groups. And I've spoken about in-group and out-groups and this idea behind social identities that people form. But I want to turn my eyes towards a very, very interesting experiment that was conducted over and over and over again to study how people simply follow what others are doing. And this explains so much, like whatever group that you grow up with, whatever environment that you grow up with often determines who you become. You know, sometimes we attribute our beliefs, we attribute our opinions as part of our identity, we think it's who we are, but often really they're just a product of the environment that we were raised in. And so if you look at a lot of the Sunni and Shiite conflict, if you look at a lot of the Armenia versus Azerbaijan conflict, if you look at the Yemeni conflicts and other conflicts that are ongoing, they're a mere product of people following those around them. Yes, th there's a stem, there's, there's a place where it roots it from, but there's more to it. Like, why does this conflict grow? Why does this start from a disagreement that starts off at a minute level, but then grows to become this thing that trends for decades and centuries? They, they, they become exacerbated for so many different reasons. And one of those reasons is this thing called social conformity. And social conformity is a very, very interesting concept within psychology. And it describes this idea that people often just follow the actions of those around them, that they adopt the ideas of those around them and there's an experiment where you get uh, around five or six people in a room and all these six people are actors within this experiment and what they do is they're told to sit down and identify the length of a line. Now amongst the crowd is one real participant, one person that the experiment's actually being conducted on. But what happens is the five people, you know, one by one get asked what is the longer line? And you know, for three or four turns, they answer correctly. For example, line A is shorter than line B. But what happens after around three to four turns is they all get it wrong. And so the four or five that come before the actual participant get the answer wrong. So they say, for example, line A is longer than line B, even though it is clearly not, even though like line A is clearly uh, shorter than line B. And what the experimenters observe is, what does it take for the fifth real participant, the person that the experiment's actually being conducted on, what does it take for them to actually conform and just say what everyone else is saying, to believe what everyone else is believing? And amazingly, after a few turns, you see the real participant, which can clearly see that the line is, is, is not at the way that they're describing it. They end up conforming. They end up saying, for example, that line A is longer than line B, even though they can clearly see that it's not. And that's the idea behind social conformity. This idea that we might not hold something to be true, but simply because others around us hold it to be true, simply because others around us do something, we conform, we do what everyone else is doing. This takes us back to this concept of the vision, this concept of conflict, of group conflict. Now conflict is apparent in in so many ways, whether it's in a religious dimension, whether it's in a cultural, a geographical dimension. Even if you're at school, there's these, there's these conflicts that occur. But, but you start to see trends amongst all these different groups. People are in this conflict that don't know why they're in that conflict. And it begs the question, you, yourself, what's a group that you hate? What's a group that you disagree with? Who are a sect, for example, that you've grown so much hatred towards, that you were raised to promote hatred towards that you were raised to be disgusted of and question why is that of your own volition is that something that you chose or is it simply you conforming to those around you now conflict is something that's not going to change overnight it's something that's existed for years it's something that's uh, you know it's ingrained in in our biology it's something that we have inherent psychological disposition towards but being aware of this conformity that we perform that this idea that we just do what everyone else is doing it helps us pause for us second and say, why Why do I actually have this view? Why do I hate this group? Is it just out of conformity 
or is it because I've actually formed my own opinion on the topic? And, and let's break this down to an even, an even smaller level. Like the clothes that you wear, are they simply because people in your area, your region, wear those clothes? The way that you speak, the way that you conduct yourself, even the way that you go ahead with marriage or relationship, all that's conforming to the people that are around you. And it's, it's not easy to diverge and break against the trend. And that's not what I'm saying. But being critical of why you hold your beliefs, why you do certain actions is quite important in a journey where we're trying to lessen conflict in a more and more divided world. And of course, if you're interested in knowing the psychology behind conflict, if you're interested in exploring the geopolitics of the world and how a lot of it just goes back down to individual differences, watch this video and subscribe to my channel.